Have you ever wanted to sound more informal but you couldn't find the word? Do you sound too serious and way too formal when you're having a normal everyday conversation in English? Do you sound like Queen Elizabeth when having a chat with your friends? If your answer is yes, this video is for you. Hi there! My name is Monica and I'm an English teacher in the south of Spain. If there is something that my students really struggle with is the fact that sometimes when they're doing their dialogues and the conversations, they struggle to find ways, words, phrases that help them sound more natural and more conversational. Do you have that problem too? Let me show you some tips, some phrases, some words that can help you with that. Number one is the use of greetings. The way we say hello in English needs to be natural, informal, colloquial, especially if we're speaking with friends and family. So how do you say hello to your friend, to your, to your sister, to your grandmother? Do you say hello, how are you? Or do you say something else? Okay, the first thing you can say is, hey, what's up? If someone tells you that, you can reply and say, I'm great, how are you? I'm great, how are you? The second way you can say hello in an informal way is, how are you doing? How are you doing? To that, you can answer, well, keeping myself busy, how about you? Keeping myself busy, how about you? The third greeting you can use is, what have you been up to? What have you been up to? Which means, what have you been doing recently? What's new in your life? To that you can say, if you don't have a lot of things going on in your life, you can say, meh, not much, same old, same old. Which basically means, I don't have a lot of things happening right now, nothing new. The last way that you can say hello in an informal way is, hey, long time no see. To that you can reply, I know, right? It's been ages, it's been ages. And that means that it's been a really long time since you two last met. The second way that you can sound more informal in your dialogues is by using idioms. Idioms are informal phrases, informal sayings that when you just put the meanings of the individual words, they really don't make sense. So for example, when you say that something costs an arm and a leg, you are only saying that in a metaphorical way. So obviously you're not going to pay something, you're not going to pay for something by giving just one arm and one leg to the, to the person, but basically it's another way of saying that something is really expensive. Okay, so the idiom number one that you can use in your dialogues is to pull one's leg. To pull one's leg. What does it mean? When you pull somebody's leg, it means that you are joking with them, you are saying something shocking or something worrying, but just as a joke. So for example, if you're having a conversation with your friend and he tells you, you know what, last night I had dinner with Madonna. What would you say? If you don't believe a word they are saying, you would say, hey, stop pulling my leg, you didn't have dinner with Madonna. Okay, basically it means stop joking around, I know that's not true. The second idiom that you can use is a British idiom and it is, it's the bee's knees. It's the bee's knees. You say this whenever you want to say that you really like someone or you really like something. So for example, you, you might tell your friend here, try this chocolate, it's the bee's knees, it really is. It really means I really like this chocolate, please try it. The third idiom that you might use in conversations is to kill two birds with one stone. We have a similar expression in Spanish and it basically means that you can accomplish a goal by just doing one action. So for example, you might say, hey, we can kill two birds with one stone if we just drop off the mail when we go to the grocery store. So basically you are doing two things at the same time. The next idiom is a very useful one, especially when you're having, again, dialogues with your partners, with your classmates, and then you want to tell them that they were exactly right, that you totally agree with them. So the idiom is, you hit the nail on the head. You hit the nail on the head. That basically means you are exactly right. So for example, you might be discussing a destination to go on holiday together and if the person tells you the destination that you were thinking about, you might say, hey, you hit the nail on the head. That, that was exactly what I wanted to say. The last idiom that you might want to use in your dialogues is to hit the books. To hit the books in an, it's an informal way to say to study, to study really hard. So for example, you better hit the books if you want to pass your exam next Wednesday. Okay, now let's talk about description. So for example, when you try to describe something, okay, sometimes you might need to use words such as kind of or sort of, okay? Basically what they mean is more or less, okay? A little bit, 
right? But instead of saying it's more or less expensive, you can say it's kind of expensive, all right? So for example, if your classmate tells you, hey, what do you think about my new shirt? You might say, hmm, oh, it's kind of cool. Okay, it's kind of cool means it's not totally cool, but it's a little bit cool, all right? You also have the expression sort of, okay? Sort of and kind of mean the same, which is basically they are used to reduce the emphasis of anything you're speaking about. Now pay attention because with pronunciation in connected speech, we don't say kind of expensive, you say kinda, kind of expensive. So what do you think about this car? Mm, it's kind of expensive, okay? Kinda, it sounds like kinda in connected speech. So stop saying more or less. So for example, if someone asks you, is he your boyfriend? And you want to say, mm, well, more or less, it's complicated. We don't say more or less, we say mm, kind of kind of, it's complicated. Now, the fourth thing that you can do to sound more informal and more conversational in your dialogues is by using phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs, as you probably know, are verbs combined or followed by prepositions, and they always have a more formal equivalent. So for example, you might have the verb discover, which is a little bit formal depending on the situation. So if you're having a chat with your friend or with a family member, you would prefer to use something a little bit more natural. So for example, find out, okay? So for example, if you want to say, uh, uh, you know what, I just found out that they were having an affair, okay? Instead of saying, I discovered that they were having an affair, to sound more natural and more colloquial, you might want to use a phrasal verb like find out. Now, another example would be the verb to enter. For example, to enter a building or to enter a room, okay? Many times, because in Spanish we have the verb entrar, we just tend to associate and assimilate that verb with enter. But enter might sound a little bit too strong, a little bit too formal, depending on what situation. So you might want to use come in instead. So for example, she came in the room to speak to me instead of she entered the room to speak to me. Another typical phrasal verb that we would like to use instead of a formal one is the phrasal verb carry on. To carry on means to continue doing something. Okay, so try to avoid saying continue when you're having a chat in an informal situation. So for example, even if I told him he carried on making that awful sound. By the way, this is a brilliant way to interrupt someone when you're having or when you're doing your dialogue conversations in class or in an exam. So for example, if your partner is trying to say something and you interrupt them uh, but you didn't mean to, you might say, oh sorry, excuse me, carry on. So carry on instead of continue, please. You just say, please carry on. Okay, and the last phrasal verb that you might want to use is to come across, okay? To come across means to find something or someone by chance. I came across this old album while I was checking my papers. Instead of simply, when I was checking my papers, I found this old album, okay? So try to use phrasal verbs in informal situations. And finally, one of the most or the biggest problems that um, many of my students have when having conversations or when having dialogues in an informal situation is that they try to use the same connectors as they would do for monologues. So for example, they're having a very natural and very colloquial uh, chat with a friend and all of a sudden they go, furthermore, uh, nevertheless, on the other hand, and it sounds kind of weird. So remember, you have replacements or equivalents that can substitute those formal connectors. For example, if you want to say, or if you want to use moreover or furthermore, when you're giving an extra idea or talking about an extra point or an additional idea, you might want to use the connector plus. Yes, plus, like the sign plus, okay? For instance, if you need to speak to your partner about the benefits of the, um, doing exercise, for example, you might say, okay, daily exercise is highly beneficial for your body because it will help you with weight loss. Plus, it will boost your mood. Plus, it will boost your mood. That is exactly the same as saying, moreover, it will, most, it will boost your mood. But it doesn't sound that formal or that serious. At times, in your dialogues, you will have to contrast ideas and have different opinions. Now, what happens when you have to contrast ideas and you're having a discussion with your classmate and you have to give different points of view? Uh, instead of using a contrast connector such as uh, however or on the other hand, you can always use on the flip side 
on the flip side, okay? So for example, if you're telling your classmate, um, well, many people claim that vaccines save lives. On the flip side, many others believe that they are useless and they are ineffective. So there you go. You have established a contrast, but avoiding the formal and serious connector, however, or on the other hand, and you made it a little bit more natural and more informal by using on the flip side. And finally, a very useful connector, especially when you're telling a story or you're narrating an anecdote, okay, is when you are coming to the end, instead of saying a conclusion connector, such as in conclusion or finally, you might say, to cut a long story short, blah 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 okay so when you want to, when you don't want to give all the details of a story but you simply mention the most important ones you might want to use this connector to cut a long story short so basically you can say mike wanted to be a doctor but to cut a long story short he became a pharmacist so basically i don't want to tell you all the details i'm just going straight to the point and telling you the main idea of my story so there you go these are my tips to make you sound more natural and more informal in your dialogues so please take a look at the channel because very soon i will upload part two of this video where i will show you even more ways and even more tips to sound more colloquial in your speaking exams thank you for watching and please leave me a comment telling me which was your favorite tip i'll see you very soon bye